You are now watching Tales from the Grid. Well, 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 it looks like one of my wishes came true. Just when I thought it may have been over, Figpin reveals the return of Figpin XLs with the XL Dino Megazord. It's currently available to purchase for $50. Just like a lot of recent Power Rangers news these days, this information comes with controversy. This Dino Megazord Figpin XL is $50 with a $13.50 shipping fee, a total of $63.49, whereas the previous XL pins were only $25 with $6.50 in shipping. The Figpin XL line launched in 2000. 19 at a price range of $20 to $25. Figpin decided to pause the XL line from 2021 onward so they could reassess the rollout of future XL pins. The XL relaunch was revealed during a March Transformers livestream with the official announcement happening in mid-April. Figpin has stated that one of the reasons why the XL line was on pause was due to their dissatisfaction with the XL packaging and backer. As evidenced by the Dino Megazord release, the packaging has been upgraded to a custom box along with a custom logo pin, double-sided art card, and an XL size power base. Figpin can justify the price increase by saying that they've upgraded the box, backer, card, and included a custom logo pin. They can also say that the material used to make the XL pin is equal to multiple standard pins. Not only was the price of the XL pin doubled, the shipping fee was doubled as well. According to their shipping fees, the Dino Megazord should ship for $650, but Figpin has stated that XL pins now fall under the box set shipping fee due to their weight and are ineligible for free shipping. What should have been a final price of $3150 has doubled to a final price of $6349. The total price may drive fans away, but as of now, the Dino Megazord has sold 352 of its 500 pins, over 70% of its entire batch. As of now, now, within a week, Figpin has made more money on the Dino Megazord than any standard Ranger pin in an entire year. This type of return in such a short amount of time could possibly encourage Figpin to make more Megazords and Zords with the XL line. A commenter asked about a possible Dragonzord pin, and Figpin responded with an excited and hopeful, maybe. Hopefully, the fans can get XL Dinosaur pins, but only time will tell. I would be down to buy a box set of the Dino Zords if the price was right, something reasonable like $125, $130. There's been murmurs of Figpin facing some financial issues so I hope that it wouldn't manifest into jacking up prices. In my personal opinion I think $50 is too much and a $13.50 shipping fee on top of that is BS. Let's hope that history doesn't repeat itself with the XL line going on hiatus again. And just this week we announced a strategic relationship with Playmates to produce and distribute Power Rangers toys starting in 2025. We now have an answer to the future of Power Rangers. Hasbro announced a licensing agreement with Playmates Toys. This agreement is for a global production and distribution of Power Ranger products. These products include action figures, vehicles, roleplay items, and more, with a Power Ranger toy line coming as soon as 2025. Playmates currently produces toys for Ninja Turtles, the Godzilla Kong franchise, Star Trek, and more. We also talked about the deal for Power Rangers. Does the early success that you're seeing with some of these licensing decisions change how you're thinking about the need to own versus license some of these CP brands going forward? I mean, I, I think it's validating that we made the right choice. You know, two years ago, we outlined what our selection criteria would be. Uh, basically, can we generate $50 million in revenue at a 10% OP? And can we grow to $100 million or more revenue at a 15% OP on a line? And so basically, we've chosen the lines to outsource that we don't think meet those thresholds. Um, but another company with maybe a different cost structure or a different set of expertise could still make uh, a really nice business with, even if it was sub $50 million. So, you know, I think we're basically done uh, without licensing. Uh, we certainly will be driving uh, cross licensing and leveraging our brands for category expansion and new product opportunities like we're doing with Lego, like we're doing with Mattel, like we're doing with location-based entertainment. But I think Power Rangers is probably, uh, a month, is probably the last brand that we will outsource. In the most recent earnings call, Hasbro CEO Chris Cox reveals that Power Rangers isn't meeting their $50 million revenue quota, which is why they chose to outsource production to another company. Based on Chris's example of $50 million in revenue at 10% OP, it looks like Power Rangers wasn't even making $5 million in profits. At such a low number, it would probably be more profitable for Hasbro to collect licensing fees than to produce and distribute Power Ranger products themselves. It's unfortunate that Power Rangers is in this predicament, 
Ryan. Hopefully, Playmates can turn the brand around so Hasbro will continue to support Power Rangers into the future. Honestly, I just want a Black Ranger helmet, Power Axe, and Beetle Borg figures. Thank you for watching another episode of Tales from the Grid, and until next time, have a good one.